Lutheran Church a little bit. And um, I'm chair of the, the town's ad hoc broadband committee. And Sam? Hi, I'm Sam Nelson. Um, I've lived in town here for a couple of decades. Yep. And I'm on the broadband committee too. Wayne? Wayne Skaggs. I've lived in town a couple months. And But you're building on in by Max Walton? Max Walton Bridge, yes. We're yep. building a new home there. All right. And Wayne has volunteered to help us with um, all things broadband as well, given his background. Bob? And Bob with Cellcom. And, and Bob is our, uh, our liaison with, with Cellcom and the Insight project. So um, I'm, we talked to Bob on a pretty much a daily basis. So, yeah. Um, how are we doing on the connection, do you think? Think we're going? I think yeah. All right. Sharing my screen sounds but... good. Can I assume you can see raised hands and all that good stuff? Um, so it'll pop up for you. All right. When you see a hand raised, it'll pop sure. up. Sure. All right. If you work for that, yeah. yeah. All right. We need to jump on ours. Oh, now you're really breaking the rules. Don't there you go. tell anybody. All right. <laughs> all right. So yes, if you need it. And uh, let me just do a couple more introductions. So we have Nathan. Is here. I, was, I wasn't supposed to be, but <laughs> well, we're glad you are. Yeah, okay. Anyway, Nathan is from Quantum. He, 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 you're the owner of Quantum Technologies, yes. right? Yep. And Quantum does tech support for the town, correct? Occasionally. We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like today. Um, but he also is, their their company's also been working with Bob's company on some things as well. Um, That's uh, right. They do all the splicing and, for us, and they're yeah. actually doing the splicing on the project out here on Frogtown, and yep. just, just finished. Yep. Just finished it. So we've been doing some of the fiber splicing here in Bailey's Harbor, and then also helping on uh, Washington Island yep. and kind of a couple spots in between as well. Yeah. So. Um, and uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? And you are helping us with uh, some content coming up. Um, in one of the later sessions. Yeah, I'll also be doing a presentation here talking about just kind of staying safe online and like really, you know, as we get these fiber connections, what stuff we kind of got to do to make sure we keep them secure. Yeah. So, um, and this the, the whole idea, again, the background on these is um, what we've said is it's, it's one thing to build a network and to get the network in place, right? And to have it available to people. It's another thing to help people understand well, what is it and how do you use it and how do you take advantage of it? And and over the course of the sessions, that's really what the goal is, is to just say, okay, well, how can I use this for watching TV and movies? How can I make phone calls? What's going to happen when they make a, you know, cut this over? Do I, do I just use my cell phone from now on? You know, that kind of stuff, um, as well as some of the functional things like um, well, we have Tracy out in the hallway. Tracy's going to come in with one of her colleagues in a, in, a, in a later session to talk about library resources that are available online. Thank you, Nathan. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so it's it's a variety of different topics that we're talking about. The other thing I just want to call out are the sponsors. So when we did this, uh, we said, hey, it's going to be the town. It's also going to be our Bailey's Harbor Community Association. Andy's in the audience. He's current president of that. Um, and uh, uh, Tracy and the library is another sponsor, along with Insight Cellcom themselves. So it's all it's all of us together. So with that, I think we're ready to start start it up. So and I'm going to turn this over to my colleague Sam, who's going to lead the lead the workshop this morning. All right. <laughs> So we're just going to be kind of going over a broad overview of the broadband project today. It's probably not going to be too much groundbreaking new information that you didn't hear at the annual meeting this last year, but we do have a couple of little updates here and there. We got a little bit of a uh, more structured plan and uh, we'll launch right into it here. In a moment. <laughs> can we there we go. Just a little bit more. Can you tip that just yeah. a, can you tip the screen just a little bit more? I do that. Yeah. Does that work a little bit better for everybody? Yes. It does, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So what what is it that we're actually doing here? 
So our goal is to get fiber internet access to every address in all of Bailey's Harbors. So that's not just the town here in the center of the greater township, but the entirety of Bailey's Harbor. And uh, we are looking to complete that within about two years of the start of the project. And we are kind of, after all the preliminary work, at the beginning here now. And uh, the way we're going to do that is working with Ensite Cellcom as our ISP or Internet Service Provider. They're a wonderful local company, and um, the projected cost is going to be about 5.25 million. The town share, after grants and partnerships, is just going to be under three million dollars. For comparison, our new fire station costs about the same. So <clears throat> the reason we're doing this is that our internet service is rather subpar compared to where it could be and where it should be. So according to speed tests that we have reported by residents, the typical service is about 10 megabits per second download and 2 megabits per second upload. So the federal government's definition of broadband internet, which is what the federal government thinks that we all should have, is about 25 megabits per second download and 3 megabits per second upload. Now, even that is a little bit lacking, honestly. We can do better than that. <laughs> so, for, so for our town internet survey, we've had 319 responses, 90% from residences and 10% from businesses. And overall, the sentiment is dissatisfaction. So for residences, uh, some of the primary complaints were that remote school was very difficult to do during the pandemic and continues to be so. Uh, working remotely, likewise, and along with typical everyday lifestyle stuff like streaming movies and gaming and file uploads, that kind of thing. <laughs> then on the business side of things, uh, what we're looking at are lost orders, things that got lost in the mix, um, the ability to process payments on a timely schedule, and uh, dissatisfied customers and guests. You know, people are used to uh, better speeds than we can offer here. And while there's a lot of great things about Door County, one of the things our visitors don't look forward to is the big cut in internet speeds. So our new proposed service is going to be 300 megabits per second download, 300 megabits per second upload. A, uh, a, uh, um, mirrored service. So what we're going to do is $48 per month for that base package offering for the first year and $63 per month after that. Then we're also looking at a $7.50 per month optional gateway device fee. So what that means is you would be paying $7.50 a month to rent a router from the ISP. Now that is the device that sits central in your home and that's what all of your devices connect to. Now, that is optional. You are more than welcome to provide your own gateway device. Uh, it's slightly more technical to get set up, but it's not that difficult and it's not that scary. So that is an option. And then the standard installation fee is a one-time $20 fee for, with a 12-month contract or $110 without. And just a note, uh, 300 megabits per second is a fantastic speed offering, but there are going to be higher speeds available from one gigabyte to 10 gigabytes. So that would probably be more on the power user or business end of the spectrum. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is by partnering with a very good ISP who Bob Webb is here today representing, Ensite Cellcom. They've got 112 years of experience in the industry and um, it has been a family uh, company since about the start. The current CEO, uh, Richard Gordon, is fourth generation, and she has a home here in Door County. They uh, operate all throughout northeastern Wisconsin, and they have um, invested several million dollars in the last decade on a fiber backbone through the uh, county. So that is a very high bandwidth fiber connection from the bottom of the county all the way to the tip. And that is what we are going to be running our fiber from the town off of. So just some really basic definitions. I think we all have a general conception of what the internet is, but 
Uh, just for technical definition, it is a system of computer networks that anybody on a network can access any other network that's connected to it, as long as they have the right permission. And broadband is just high speed internet access. It's how much data uh, throughput you can have at one time. And that gets really important when you're talking about high quality video files in particular. I think something we're probably all a little more familiar with, with our streaming services and with Zoom meetings and remote school the last couple of years. And Wi-Fi is just a uh, wireless way to make all of that work together. So there are a couple of different ways to uh, provide broadband from a fiber backbone or any kind of backbone to a residential or business uh, address. So you've got cellular service, you've got fixed wireless, which is what a lot of us have in town. It's just a little uh, antenna pointed at another antenna on a mast. For a lot of us downtown here, that's the big mast on the Pulse building. Or via satellite, which is the same concept, just with antennas pointed up to lower orbit. And then there's fiber, which is about the most straightforward of the bunch. It's just a uh, fiber optic cable connecting two different ones. So the reason we're using fiber in particular is because it is a very flexible distribution method. Um, we can get it to every single residence and business in Bailey's Harbor without having to worry about things like cutting down trees or uh, worrying about uh, bad weather interfering uh, with the signal in between the antennas. It's uh, far more reliable than wireless or satellite for this reason. And it is extremely expandable and adaptable. So current uh, wireless network solutions have kind of a hard cap on the amount of data that they're capable of. And most of our everyday uses are going to approach that cap sometime soon. However, with fiber, it is extremely modular, and extremely expandable. So as the town's data uh, needs expand, we can expand the network with them. <laughs> and when we say it goes everywhere, we do mean it. <laughs> I think we, uh, we probably, most of us know where this picture was taken. <laughs> so um, the big question, how much will it cost? So here's the breakdown. We're looking at five and a quarter million dollars all in. So for materials, 300,000. For the drops, that means the uh, build out of cable from the fiber backbone to uh, larger distribution cables, and then from those cables to residences, we're looking at $254,000. For the on premise equipment, so that would be the um, uh, fiber splitters, everything that is necessary to branch off of those main networks to residences, uh, the gateways, all that, we're looking at $121,860. Uh, for electronics, $30,000. And for labor, that's the big cost here, about four and a half million. So these are all estimates based on the uh, County Economic Development Center engineering study that was completed in November of 2021. And then cross validated with the Washington Island Electric Co ops uh, fiber to premise project, which is ongoing. So, we as a town are not looking at paying that full five and a quarter million dollar cost. We're going to offset that in a few ways. So, Ensite Cellcom is contributing $400,000 to the project, as is Lawrence University, which owns Bjork Linda, south of town here. And the uh, county itself is chipping in $38,000. And we secured a grant from the state for $1,890,000. So the town is looking at an actual cost of $2,822,000. So if we're looking at comparing what uh, new network costs will be to the consumer versus what the current tax bill is, I think you'll all be very happy. Now, the current cost is about $100 for a basic package, depending on the provider. And that's an average. That's not uh, that's not any particular package. So the new service is going to be about $63 after the first year promotion, which will be less than that. Now, the tax increase to fund the project is going to be about $10 per month. So if we're looking at uh, 
the difference between your current average cost and the average cost of the new service minus that ten dollars we're looking at a monthly savings of twenty seven dollars for a far far better internet product so for the grant application that we submitted to the state of wisconsin we're looking at a timeline like this so months one to three that's about where we're at now we're looking at the engineering and environmental work months four to seven we are doing permitting and material order months eight to eleven we're looking at the beginning of construction and testing the network and then the second year we're looking at the completion of construction splicing and the uh turning on of all customers in the town now, our goal is to complete as much of this as possible this year. However, it is probably going to be likely that it's going to extend into 2024. But we will have everyone up and running by the end of 2024. So, what we're looking at here overall is an increase of speed by a factor of about 10. We're looking at having a local support team partnership with Insight Cellcom, and uh, um, that will help everyone with any problems they might have with the network. And it should be here no later than 2024, and it's going to save all of us a fair amount of money. All right, so just to wrap up, we're looking at the goal with this project of improving <clears throat> student education. Uh, local access to medical services remotely, the ability to work from home remotely, and hopefully an increase in local business and revenue to the community, uh, attracting more guests here, more uh, visitors, more hopefully uh, long distance family members to come home when they know that they can watch uh, Netflix and 4K. <laughs> All right. And uh, we have five more workshops in this series over the next month, every Wednesday at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, not sure if it's going to be down here yet. We're going to reevaluate that after technical difficulties today. But the first one on February 1st is going to be all about how to watch TV and movies and make phone calls using the Internet. Looking at migrating those legacy services from uh, landlines and satellites and coax cable connections onto broadband connections. Uh, the next session, February 8th, is going to be all about telehealth and remote access to medical resources in the county and library resources. February 15th, you're going to be doing an overview of what the actual installation process involves and all about keeping safe online. Some really basic uh, just security tips in general for working online. February 22nd, we're going to be talking about affordability programs for the internet. So that's accessing uh, subsidy programs either through the county, through the states, or through any number of uh, local nonprofits and health groups. And then March 1st, our final session, we're going to be looking at doing financial and banking services online and accessing other government services online. And that's all we've got for you today. <laughs> it's like we've got a question already. Yeah, I'm wondering uh, connection to a residence. Is yes. that through the air or excavation through the dirt? or So it's all going to be a direct connection. So no over the air. And that's either going to look like an aerial drop or a subterranean drop. So it'll either be, um, you know, an aerial drop via telephone line if there's already a line going to the building, or we'll be looking at doing trenching to the building. Or if you are already lucky enough to have conduit run from the road to your building, then that's as easy as it gets. Yes. I live on Brown County Road. Yes. Uh, and we haven't heard anything uh, about this. Uh, and a number of my neighbors, that, that's why I'm here today, is okay. trying to go and, and let them know. Um, but uh, I saw on your email that 30 people already have this. Yes. I just wondered if it would be if some of my neighbors, if, if we could get some of that information so we could talk to them. Certainly. Yeah, um, we can uh, work on providing that. So okay. as part of a pilot program in conjunction with the Bureau of Project, 
we have already uh, lit up 30 homes on part of Frogtown and Chapel Lane. Yeah, just to be clear, yes. the construction is finished now uh, yes, along sorry. there. The drops have yet to be scheduled. Oh, and it's the stretch from, just also to be clear, from the 57E intersection, okay. Frogtown heading east, and then Chapel heading south. That's the little stretch we're talking about. Okay. So there are roughly 30 parcels along there. And with the construction now being complete, they can turn their focus to getting the folks who are going to do the drops. And Bob, can you tell us how many have signed up? So we have, we have uh, 12 uh, total. 12 total signed up. Uh, and nine of those drops will be aerial. So those will happen in the next few weeks. Uh, three of those drops will be subterranean, and those will get batched up and done uh, uh, in the spring sometime um, when the when the ground um, th thaws. Yes, and yeah. we and we can you know batch up a bunch of work together, um, okay. which is saving everybody some money. Okay. So so if you were on those that stretch, you would have been notified, correct? N numerous mailings went out. Numerous mailings went out. No, so I'm on the other side. No worries. Okay. All right. Yeah, when we say frog down, when we said it, it was like, ooh, better be clear about where we mean on frog down because there's two segments of it. So it's just that stretch from the highway to chapel and then south. That's it. Clear as much. Andy? Yeah, quick question. And then thanks for all your guys' work on this project. It's pretty amazing what's gonna what's gonna be happening here in the next couple of years. First, um, is there anything that we need to do? It sounds like the folks over on Frogtown and Chapel, they got sent mailers, but for the rest of us that aren't there, is there any, you know, any wait list or any place where we need to get our, our name signed up to make sure that we don't, don't miss the boat on this? You, you won't miss the boat, I guarantee you, but there is a website on the cellcom.com website. Uh, it's like slash Bailey's Harbor, and you can just do a search for cellcom Bailey's Harbor, and you'll probably get, sure. get right there, uh, where, you know, statuses are posted uh, regularly, and you can put your name on a list there. I don't know what they send out on that list. Yeah. It's a very long module, but you can put your name on the list there so that as there are updates, they will send it out. And then you have a list. Yeah, and so the other thing that we do is through the town. So we post stuff on the website, but they also manage a listserv of roughly 400 email addresses, I think is what I'm told. Um, and we distribute through that list. And, and we're doing every other month, roughly, every About. quarter. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it really is sort of dependent on where we are with updates in terms of new information. But the goal is to keep sending stuff out that way. Um, and then the Bailey's Harbor Community Association has been, as co-sponsors of this kind of stuff, has been sharing it on their listservs, which is a lot of business owners and what have you, but others too, other community members get it that way. So there's a variety. Of, and then, of course, the Pulse has been very good about keeping us, you know, the, the broader community updated. Um, I know Jessica, she sends stuff out to all the townships, you know, about all the townships. So we're trying to, and if there's other ways to keep people updated, you you know, we're all ears because it's really important for folks to hear. Um, and then the other thing is literally, it's just word of mouth too. So we're saying, come to these things and then tell people what you're hearing. So that's another way to do it, a really important way. Great. Okay. Second question. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking more so from a, a facility like the Ridges or maybe some businesses that have you know, lodging that had multiple buildings, um, whether that's on one single property or kind of spread over multiple properties. So take the ridges, for example, um, service to the Our Nature Center and then service to maybe our new, a new property and then service to older uh, Nature Center up on County Road Q. How does something like that work? Is it like three different accounts similar to how we might have with like our water bill um, or are we able to go all in on all of our buildings? I mean, we can combine bills right. at the end of the day, but it, it's really the number of services that, that you require. So when we're dealing with a hotel-like structure, we generally bring service just to the hotel itself. Mm -hmm. All right. When, when we're dealing with a condo-like structure where there are separate units along the road, we bring service into each unit. Um, in an apartment building, of sorts, let's say you have an eight, you, eight MDU or a uh, 16 you know, unit MDU, there we, we need to work with that MDU owner. Our preference 
is to bring service into every unit in an MDU. Um, and just to be clear, MDU, multi-family dwelling unit, right? Multi-family okay. dwelling, dwelling. Multi dwelling unit. Multi-dwelling unit. Multi-dwelling unit. dwelling unit. Yep, there we go. So there are, and then there are MBUs, which are multiple business units, strip malls, or office buildings. And I don't know if we have those in Bailey's Hunter or not, but, but there certainly is strip malls. There we would, again, need to work with whomever that owner is, but our preference would be to bring the service to every unit in there but with a with specifically with a hotel um then they're responsible once we get to to the d mark um as far as bringing something to a reserve i don't know the reserve have a building that we would bring it to or or not i don't know what what the reserve is but yeah and just to weigh in andy you know that's where i think having a conversation about the ridges footprint itself because you very well may get, be able to get by with some Wi-Fi kinds of connections, right? Wired, not wired connections in certain places, right? So like if you're putting some of those, we've talked about this, some of the monitoring devices, uh, you know, that you might want to gather data other than on SD cards, but in real time, that might be, we may be able to pull that off with, with Wi-Fi, right? That kind of thing. And that's where like Nathan's sitting back there, you know, he's the kind of, that's the kind of business around here that can help us figure that kind of configuration out. So does that, does that kind yeah. of help? Yeah. yeah. Good. So say just in the building, like we've got over at the ridges, so we've got an existing phone system and internet service. So would the, uh, would that interface with that service that we have that we don't have to change everything else in the building? Well, it, and Ed, we're going to get into that. I just want to say we're going to get into that in greater detail. Well, that was more consumer. So this is really a good opportunity. Okay. Because he he's got a business phone system. Um, got it. Yeah, got it. you've got a business phone system. Um, my guess is today um, that phone system works on what we call a line card or either a PRI card, actually. Um, uh, while it is possible, depending on how many lines you have on that line card in the PBX, to, to use a, a, a special device that will, will allow you to keep it, you may also want to look at switching to a more modern SIP, uh, SIP uh, trunk group solution. Uh, and that we have we have business phone system specialists who can work directly with you and determine whether what you have you know can can go. But we can support up to a certain size, a reasonable amount of legacy line card based PBXs. I, I wonder if I'm just looking at you because of BHCA. It may, it may make sense for us just and you um, because we may want to just have a separate conversation with the business owners around that kind of. Use business phone systems. We'd be happy to come up here and talk about phones, business phone systems. So you know, all here, kind of like this, right? They all, y'all hear it at once, and you can figure things out. Then they can go forward. Yeah. Another question: I see a lot of uh, orange tubing sitting over at Door County Broadband. Is that part of our project? No, nope, that's a different project. They have their own project that they're doing there. Yep. And then you'll also, but you also see it. Have you been to Sturgeon Bay in the yeah, last couple of weeks? Like and all this stuff. Yeah. So that's. That's a that shared conduit that's going down as we just we found out recently between uh, WPS is involved with that. Yep. Um, AT and T charter and are you guys are so, so I checked with my engineers last night because yeah. you guys brought this to my attention. So we have about eight hundred feet. Oh, three poles that that we need to go underground on. Okay. Uh, we'll have our own conduit in those eight hundred feet uh, joint. Um, so if you look at our fiber path, it doesn't go up 57 okay. it, you know, because it was done in conjunction with the county. I'm assuming we went down more county roads. So right. we, we look like a step ladder going up, right? Yeah. Up as opposed to that diagonal coming up. So, so you're very limited in that. 800 feet, they told yeah. me, and three so poles. It's, so it's mainly the a power and company, AT&T and Charter. And what I heard is Spectrum Frontier in the power company in my list. Ah. So now maybe when it gets to... Um, uh, Jacksonport, I believe, is Jacksonport AT&T? The Frontier. Jacksonport, right. So through that is probably Frontier. frontier. Okay. And, it's, and it's probably similar because they're being dislodged. You know, they're, they're not, you know, they're being dislodged because of the construction work. And so they need to move 
uh, to, to move in order to accommodate, which is what's happening to us on our street. I levels. see. I see. Okay. So, um, okay. Yeah. I believe and, Bertram is part of that as well. Yeah, they could be, right? It, it means it's large. Shared, I think they're going through there as well. We yeah. haven't heard that at all. Yeah. So heard. that's and what I you heard. They are, they're Carter in there? Said no. What's that? Charter said no when I asked them. Uh, but they they do have some. So, I mean, there's two ways to look at it. Yeah. Are they investing new or are they maintaining? What I heard is that there are some of their facilities, maybe a very short span, are being right. moved as part of the project Got and it. they will be adjusted. And and the, and it and is it safe to say that most of that's happening because the utility is wanting it to happen? No, I think it's safe to say that this is a DOT project that people are responding to. Ah, uh, got it. Okay. All right. Yeah. And okay. I think that bridge is getting the bridge is getting replaced in Valmy. Valmy. That like little bridge area with the swamp bike and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. What else that that we need today? Because we'll we're we're gonna be back next week and the week after that. <laughs> we'll talk about different stuff each time. But we yeah, this one was meant to be sort of like what's what's going on with the basic project and that sort of thing. So we still have 13 minutes. <laughs> in the meeting, how will you be able to get all the information? Especially, I'm very interested in the February 1st one, but I can't be here. Yeah. So we're we're trying to figure out how we can record it. Um, the other option would be to um, certainly give the slide so you got it. Any of us on a committee are happy to chat with any of you. So, I mean, those of you who've reached out to me, I think you've noticed that I've tried to be really quick in my replies. So, um, and I'll 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 chat with anybody about what's going on. Um, and then, because um, unlike him, I I don't have to go to work every day, so <laughs> so I got more time on my hands. Must be um, nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's really nice. You're gonna get there someday. Um, but then uh, it, we're, we can also, we can redo the sessions to it. For some reason, we can't record them. We'll run sessions again. Yeah, yeah we're happy to. So. And even if you can't be here in person, we will be broadcasting all of these meetings via Zoom. So you you can um, watch yeah. remotely in, in real yeah. time. Yeah, yep. yeah, we updated that flyer that we sent out. And there's a second page now, and um, Katie and Haley put the links a zoom link for each one of the sessions so you if you can't make it in person but you can make it virtually um do it that way and in fact some of the presentations may be virtual in the future oh okay yeah, exactly what's just what's we, you know glad i was here today but, yeah but i don't know that i'll be able to make it every week sure understandable and uh yeah and just think but we should be able to have this all set up that you'll be able to see me up there and yes in the ether will as well yeah yeah, like I said, they just had to unplug everything for the paint job, and now it looks like we got to get things reconnected. So, what else? What else is on folks' minds? Uh, it, it, oh, Scott, did you have something you're going to ask? Uh, <clears throat> just looking at like uh, we talked about residents, three hundred up, three hundred down, sixty three dollars a month. Um, and being new, um, I'm not sure. Was there anything talked about businesses? Yeah, business rate schedule came out too. I do have a business rate schedule. If you want me to bring it up real quick, or I can, yeah, that would be great. All right, let's let me see if I can find it. It's not substantially different from what I recall. Do you know? It's a it's a slight price increase for business customers. It's pretty standard, and that the, comes with increased support. Okay, yeah, it's pretty standard in the industry that there's a tier. Yeah. It, it's so if it's like sixty three for residents. It's like under a hundred for a for a business. Same three hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With the ability yeah. to um, increase that uh, that speed. If yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sir. What are you about options for security instead of currently purchasing our own virus protection, et cetera? Are there things available through this connection? Uh, no, there there won't be. That will be all on the consumer end. Gotcha. On the business side, on the business side, I you know Nathan would be willing to help you. We have a team that would be willing to help you on the business side get set up there. So we when we have that business, for businesses or residents? For businesses. For businesses. On, on the businesses side yeah. of things. Right. You know, I mean that if that's something that folks um want to spend a little more time on, like when we get to that session with Nathan and folks, mm -hmm. it's just to talk about well what what 
what are the things that that you could easily install as extensions and things like that on your browser and how you do that we can we'll definitely make sure we cover that so um after the first year it's 77 dollars a month for the 300 up okay thank for you businesses. for businesses 77 did you hear that scott yeah 77 thank you okay mm -hmm. um you know i'll just just speaking to that one of the things i've done is i don't have a windows computer anymore um, i use a chromebook and chrome is a browser thing so just by doing that alone you're protecting yourself a whole bunch because you've got basically google is kind of like your take you know there's good good and bad with google like you know, and all that kind of stuff but the well, one thing they are able to do is to kind of keep a lot of junk away from you so and kind of speaking off the record here um in 2023 uh most third-party antivirus solutions for personal computers have become pretty redundant you can you could go without that if you have a windows computer you could just use the built-in antivirus yeah. but we'll nathan is it safe to say we'll talk about stuff like that when yeah. we do the keeping safe online yeah all right or do it cool what else what else Well, I think we've maybe, is this kind of what you were anticipating? Yeah. Okay, is there anything else based on the conversation today and what Sam showed you we're gonna be talking about that you really want us to, to bring up in future sessions? Because we just, I mean, we kind of just made the list based on what we thought people wanted. And I know I talked with a few folks um, just to say what else might there be but hey we got a captive audience what else might we want to chat about we got questions for do we want to check with folks online oh yeah 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 of course if i'm sorry if we ignored if that. they can hear us i'm assuming they can do folks online want to have any questions yes henry saperstein has a a thing and I, apparently i click on a lot of talk i'm a team user yeah hi henry how are you Good. Uh, just a, a, a question regarding the uh, underground uh, provisions uh, for, for each home. You know, we live out uh, in, in the North Bay area, and what what uh, our, our biggest problem out here is a lot of people can't get internet other than satellite. And even that is difficult because they're in the woods. So this is an area that is uh, poorly, uh, the provisions for internet are very poor. Uh, most of the newer homes out here have been uh, uh, su supplying their, their uh, WPS when underground from the road to the home. So am I to understand that People out here who, who have that situation or any place, uh, they'll have to foot the bill for cutting through. So let's be clear from from the road to, from I'm sorry from the road to the house. So that's when we talked about. We're not sure how that's going to be funded at this point, much less how much it's going to cost. So. The town and the committee, I should speak up, speak to, has been discussing how that, how those will be funded. Could we do something like a special assessment, for example, um, that would allow the? It, let me back up. I think what we all agreed is that everyone should have a drop, and that there's a there's a reasonable standard cost for a drop but in some situations we're going beyond what's reasonable in a sense right and so it's in those situations where we need to have this conversation about well how much more are we talking about and what's the best way to fund that should the homeowner pay it all should the town pay it all um you know there's we're not sure yet exactly how to handle that. All right. And I had to mute Henry. So now I'm going to ask Henry to unmute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go ahead, Henry. Does that help at all? Uh, it, it does. It does. It just seems that uh, 
those people who have to go uh, uh, underground and foot some of that bill, uh, they're already footing the bill for everyone else through the uh, town, correct? So just, so I'm, we're gonna mute you while, cause we're getting feedback. So we're gonna mute you while we're speaking here and then we'll unmute you when we're done. So the cost that the town is bearing is for all of the, the essentially the distribution network and the electronics and the head end infra, you know, is stuff, everything that kind of is the bigger network. In addition, between the town and 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 Ansight and Cellcom, they we are figuring out how to make sure the cost of a standard drop is covered. It's only in those situations where we go beyond and we have not determined exactly what standard means yet, those situations, either aerial or underground, if it's goes in, uh, if the cost exceeds that, how we're going to pay for that. So be clear, you're helping to pay for the network and the distribution network and the electronics and all that kind of stuff of the network. Just like everybody else, it's just that those drop extensions, if you will, that go beyond what we would call a standard uh, length that we have some, we have to figure out how to pay for. So it really is an extenuating kind of situation beyond the rest of the network that we're, that we're talking about in terms of that expense. All right. And now, Henry, I'm going to ask you to unmute again. That answers my question so far. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Another question, Ed? Yeah, so it seems the greatest cost of underground is cutting through rock. I mean, yep. well, yeah. what our utility in is standard trench, no rock. That we so is there standard trench, no rock. It's a lot less expensive than cutting through rock. And I'd be like that. We, we'll be covering installations and drops and what that physically looks like. I thought it was next week, but now I look at yeah. your agenda and it looks like two, two weeks, weeks from now. Weeks from now. Okay. Um, but we have that. We'll talk about the equipment used, what the lawn looks like yeah. when we're done. What, what the side of your home looks like, what the inside of your home looks like. We'll talk about all of those things. In, in that Have you ever found if the utilities are buried and they've already done like rock sawing or drilling or anything like that, that the trench they made originally is big enough that you can just like you know, I, it? I, I wish... I wish I wore boots like that more often. <laughs> Wearing these shoes, I'm not. I'm. I'm not close enough in the field. Okay. I'm sorry. I just. Yeah, just I, I can. I can take that question. Good question. Home. It's a good question, but I. I can take that yeah. question home, uh, but I can't. Another like, question. Are you going to have a central repository for all these slides in the? We'll put them on the town website okay. under the broadband committee. Okay. Yeah, town website broadband committee. Other questions online. <laughs> Bob, any other questions online? Nobody else has their hand up okay. online. Anybody else in the room? Yeah. What is the typical cost per foot for burying a line with no rock? With no rock. Yeah. With no rock, which is where, where we can use, and this would cover, where we can use a walk behind trencher that inserts the, the cable as we go, we're going to get that built in most houses for less than, say, $700, $800. Yeah, in most. So if you go to a community like our the community in Luxembourg, Wisconsin, where we did, you'll see these cute little homes all lined up, older homes all lined up in a row, relatively close, plowable things. You know, drops are not an issue in that community. When we get up here, as with other things up here, we face some additional challenges that are going to take some some creative. So so yeah, it's 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 really you know under. A reasonable length drop we're going to get done for for seven hundred eight hundred dollars. Do you follow the WPS drops? Can you follow them right along? I, that's I think that's what, uh, what Jessica, Jessica was, was asking. trying to get at. It. Yeah, if you right. do, or is it is it software and that? I, oh yeah. I don't I don't know the answer to that, and I'm just not close enough to that process to tell you. But I will take okay. that back. And, and in that. two weeks, we're talking a lot more about drops right. in the installation process. So maybe by then we'll have a little more information. I'll try to understand yeah. whether you do that. Or yeah. not. Uh, um, I will say this. You know, when we put ours in, like I told you, I said we put some conduit at the same time. The the bill from WPS to go, I think it was like 175 feet, was two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. 
to, to do the rock saw. And boy, is that a big rock saw. Yeah, we have a picture yeah. of that rock saw that's coming. Yeah, It's, it's yeah. almost as tall as me. And, and the thing about the rock saw is it's slow. Yeah. That's the thing about the rock saw. So you have at least two people working for a long period of time. So it's not just that the rock saw, the rock saw is a relatively slow process. At least it's the labor associated it's with the it. time. Yeah. Right. right. Question back there. 1,200 feet, Barry? Yeah. Oh. Woo! And my neighbor yeah. probably got 15 minutes. <laughs> you, are, you are one of our edge cases that we will have to. Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking to you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch. Yeah. yeah. We've got a lot of things you can bring it on. All right, there you go. Okay. There you go. Anything else? All right, I want to thank you all very, very much. Thank yes. you to Bob. Thanks to Wayne and Sam. And we're going to see you all hopefully in a week from now. Well, thank you all thank very you. much. Yeah, you are welcome. Absolutely.